counting on you. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. All right. So I'm Suzanne Quast, and I am really, I don't know if excited is the right word. I'm really intrigued, and I want to get and absorb as much information from Jade Luna as possible. You know, Jade, I know you have a really big client or celebrity clientele, but I think what right now is way more interesting is the fact that you're an astrologist who has predicted what is happening right now in the world. And right now, the world is arguably in one of the biggest defining moments that we may ever see. So I guess to start, I'd love for you on a high level to explain what kind of astrology you practice, also um, what exactly you predicted and how you were able to predict it. Thanks for those questions. Those are amazing. And, uh, you know, using, I used an ancient 27 sign system that was created by the ancient Babylonians and Egyptians. Alexander the Great eventually learned it from the Egyptians. There was once a time on this planet where this was the centralized astrology system that was used worldwide. And I've been trying to reintroduce this system back to the public for about like 15 years now because it can do things like predict pandemics. And you only can predict pandemics and situations like we are experiencing now through this particular system and through Vedic astrology. There's a very specific alignment between what I call Asterian astrology, the system I use, and Vedic astrology. Uh, so you can only see pandemics through this system. Uh, Western astrology cannot predict pandemics. It doesn't have the capacity to do so. And the reason being is it doesn't have a proper understanding of the north and south node. Like if you read books about the north and the south node, which are responsible for creating eclipses, uh, you'll see them talk about the north node being the future, the south node being the past. The truth of these particular planetary forces, the north and south node, is missed in Western astrology. These are forces that ancient cult cultures have seen as the most malefic forces in all of creation. The south node, which we call K2 in India, I call the body of Medusa. Uh, the head of Medusa is the north node, and she had her head severed, and the north node is her head, and the south node is her body. So we believe that the south node is fully responsible for viruses, pandemics, uh, epidemics. Uh, so we had a major eclipse in December uh, where the sign Hecate was eclipsed. Hecate is the goddess of, of nature, and can be the wrath of nature. So having an eclipse under her sign started this process. We've only had two eclipses like this in our past. One was in December of 1917, right before the Spanish flu. The other one was right before the Black Plague. And so this was not a hard prediction to make. Uh, as a matter of fact, last year, I thought one of two things would happen under this type of an alignment. One of them, being a pandemic, the other being a planet hit by a comet or something like that. The body of Adusa or the South Node, because she has no head, rules over mind-blowing experiences that change our life permanently. And we are watching something. So I anticipated through this eclipse something mind-blowing to take place. That's one aspect. That's just one thing that was going on. The other one is when you use real astrology, we're using the stars in the sky. Uh, people have to understand that Western astrology, the first day of Aries is the first day of spring. Western astrology is based upon the equinoxes, and they de decipher the 12 signs through the four equinoxes. That is for creating calendars. So Western astrology was originally employed for creating calendars. Uh, was not employed for the practice of astrology in the sky. So an astrologer in ancient time had two jobs. One, calculating the stars in the sky, predicting human nature, and creating calendars for seasons and for the growing of crops. They were two separate jobs an astrologer had. Catholicism created anti-divination laws. Can you just cut out for the second part of that? The, the screen kind of went fuzzy, so I didn't okay. hear that. Oh, which part was that? The I can I'll I'll go backwards to say that uh, an astrologer had two jobs in ancient time. One was calculating the stars in the sky for human nature, 
The other one was creating calendars for the growing of crops. Catholicism created anti-divination laws, making the observance of the stars in the sky illegal. And then at that point, the calendar of that time became the zodiac that was used publicly. Because you weren't allowed to observe the stars in the sky, you would have been hung publicly for doing so. So this particular set of laws, anti-divination laws, pushed real astrology underground, and then this seasonal system of astrology then came out of it. But going back to predictions here, yeah. when you use the stars in the sky, Saturn, Pluto, and Jupiter all just moved into Capricorn at the same time. So we had this eclipse in December, which would kick off a series of intense transitions that this alignment of Jupiter, Saturn, and Pluto in conjunction would then further and take to a whole other level. Okay, so just to explain this and people who have no idea what you're talking about, because <laughs> there's a lot of words that I'm like, wait, okay, to break this down simply, your Asterian astrology is a type of Eastern astrology. Western astrology is what we know when we think of the horoscopes, and that's based on the calendar. However, yes. Asterian Eastern astrology is based on the stars and the alignment of those. And so this is technically more accurate for predicting actual pandemics or really anything, right? Anything in human nature. And also what make a, just a small correction that Asterian astrology was created by the Greeks. So it is not Eastern. It is now the East is the only place left that practices real astrology. Um, so... I don't consider it Eastern astrology because the Greeks were responsible for this particular system uh, spreading worldwide. Uh, Alexander the Great, he would have his priests with him, and when they took over certain locations, his priests would teach astrology to those locations. So this is technically, I don't call it Eastern, it's called the zodiac in the sky. Okay. It means we use the zodiac in the sky. So based on then the zodiac in the sky, Jupiter, Saturn, and Pluto, okay, are now moving into Capricorn. They did. They did. back All in within a month span of time, yes. So because of that, and now you were then able to predict that a possible thing like a comet hitting the world or the Earth or a pandemic would occur. That's correct. The okay. combination of several alignments, the eclipse gave a foreboding warning that something was coming. But then when these three alignments of Jupiter, Saturn, and Pluto moving into Capricorn together, you could predict the world would change in ways and it would never ever return to its normal state beforehand. So then is there a way that we could have prevented this? Uh, no. <laughs> no. Uh, now, we went to the state that we are in the United States that's another story. Yeah, I think we could have done a better job, if you're asking me. We could actually have changed the the extent of what we're dealing with. But the actual pandemic that we're dealing with, no, we would have had to have dealt with one way or the other. Okay, so since you have predicted this pandemic, is it then plausible to think that you could predict how this would end? And if so, how does this end? We need well, to... That's you know, that's the bigger question, and it's a conversation that you and I, I've had regarding other subjects. You know, like an astrologer, we can accurately predict, especially using Asterian, when you're going to meet someone and when you're going to fall in love with someone. But predicting how long the choices they have to make. So what I've been telling people that let's just – What? Let, predicting – let's just say you can predict as an astrologer two people coming together, but predicting how long they will last – is a different story because that's decisions that they make along the way. See, fate and free will exist entirely at the same time, you know? So my point is, let's just assume that this planet just had a heart attack. You know, it went through a massive change. And let's just say someone recovers from that heart attack. They change their health. They change their viewpoints. They live in a higher lifestyle, then in some respects, the heart attack was a good thing for them to go through as it put them in the, the right state of consciousness. But if you don't learn from that heart attack, and if you start doing the things that you that led to that heart attack, then your second heart attack is more likely going to take your life. 
My feeling is personally that we have learned from this experience. We have an eclipse coming in June where we go from the goddess Hecate, who's a very wrathful force. It's not her only side, but it's a side that we're dealing with right now, passes the torch to Prometheus. He is the eclipse in June, and he was the god of humanitarian rights. He was the god of humanity. My feeling is that his eclipse in June, June 21st, passes the torch to him, and I think we start to move out of this pandemic era. There's another alignment going on in September that coincides with it. So I believe from June 21st to September 21st, the two equinoxes, we start to slowly move out of this particular phase and we start evolving on a whole other level afterwards. The changes of the planet are so significant. The alignments are unlike anything we've seen using real astrology in over four to 500 years. What does that mean? Means I think the changes we go through are permanent. I think that there are other things that are going to take place while this pandemic is going on, they start to introduce us to a whole new way of living. So I don't think we ever go back to what was once normal. What are those things, those significant changes? Well, I believe that there is a potential for a higher consciousness to come through all of this. You know, really speaking, we've been talking about third world wars. We've been talking about, you know, California falling into the ocean. We've been talking about major predictions of devastation since the 80s. You know, astrologers have been talking about this a lot, but we are looking at the face of something that could annihilate all of those things. You know, the Spanish flu killed more people than World War I, II, and the Civil War altogether. We're looking at something that is, really speaking, scary. And I think that what we're looking at is so frightening for some people, I think people are gonna change from this. And I think we do eventually move into a higher state of consciousness or understanding because of it. Okay, I have two questions. One is if we're coming into this higher sense of consciousness, which I think is you know, a really important thought, what is the spiritual significance of this, not just as a world, but as each of us individually? Of the, what is the, the spiritual significance of this pandemic, not just for the world, but for each of us individually? Well, you know, a part of Eastern thought is about embracing the impermanence of all things and getting comfortable with the fact that we don't live forever. There are things that are larger than us that we have to experience. These are the type of experiences we have in human nature that change the way we think, function, and feel permanently. Sometimes people need something traumatic to unite people, and we're looking at that. So my feeling is that individually, this has shooken so many people to the core, I don't think people ever return to normal from this experience. And I think it is complete ignorance to do so. And so I, 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 the amount of people I have talked to since this whole thing has started that have already started thinking about health consciousness, started thinking about spiritual consciousness, the fact that our lives eventually have to end, these types of understandings and inner conflicts and confrontations we go through have to be experienced in order to grow. We're being forced to deal with all of these things now. Okay, so on a more micro level, like actual tangible things, are there three things that you could say are astrological hacks or tips to help people get through this time? Well, you know, personally, I believe that we will resolve this. And I think that already by itself will alleviate some people from whatever their suffering is. Eventually, you know, everything comes and goes in phases, you know. Eventually, we will get past what we're going through right now. Um, yet, I think people need to centralize around the feelings that they have right now of impermanence that this whole thing is brought up. The world you know can change overnight. We just watch that happen. Mm -hmm. So I think that there really doesn't have to be anything that someone personally does in their own life. Yet, I do encourage med meditation. Uh, I do encourage people to kind of try to tap into their higher self in phases like this. But I think that what we've experienced is enough that when we start going back to normalcy, people Wait, will think differently because of what they just cut out. When we start going back to normalcy, what? I think that people will have been confronted with something so strong that there's an awakening that's going to take place that I believe is definitely permanent for most people. You know, I didn't like to hear that 
China was going back to wet markets. And I, there were certain things I didn't like to hear. But here in the United States, I definitely experienced a a global consciousness building from this whole experience, unlike anything I've ever seen, because we're looking at the scariest thing I think that exists in all of creation. I think it's scarier than what a pandemic can do is more horrific than a third world war can do in some respects. But so we're looking at one of the scariest forces out there. And I think that will change us. What do you tell people right now? Because there are so many people who are living with anxiety and fear about not just uncertainty, right? Not just being getting comfortable being uncomfortable, but they're concerned about their careers, their jobs, being able to provide for their families. What do you tell those people? Well, and I've been having these conversations on a day-to-day -day basis. I've been telling people it's time to think about what you're really passionate about. You know, I, I think that in this time off, people have been caught up so much in the grind. And this comes from an astrological alignment. The constellation Capricorn rolls over career, dharma, destiny. And to have Pluto, Saturn, and Jupiter all enter Capricorn, it's a time for people to investigate what they really want to do in their life. People have been caught, so caught up in work, routine, and things of that nature. I know that people are panicking over finances and things of that nature. I already know that this will come to pass. You know, this particular cycle we're in now, people will have, you know, People will have a new normal coming here pretty soon. So my feeling is that you have to kind of wait these things out. And the time being, you should tap into your spiritual self, focus on meditation and things of that nature. But I'm, I think that when this passes, people will feel differently entirely from it. I don't really, I'm the type to recommend for practice if people like it, but I don't think that, you know, there's so many different ways that we can grow as people. It's not the only way. I think creativity, I think this is time for people to kind of investigate what they're truly passionate about. So when we return back to new nor a new normal, you realize how short life actually can be and that you live in a different way because of that. I just hope that people are really focusing in on, you know, it's time to reevaluate re your whole life entirely. What really makes you happy? What doesn't make you happy? Concentrate and think about these things. We're going to have a new normal coming back soon. And to, from this point onward, live in your highest self and the things that matter to you the most. I love that. Okay. So what do you say to the people that believe that this is just like the flu and they don't understand why people are freaking out and that the media is making more of this than it is? Do you have, do you agree with that? Do you disagree? What are your thoughts? I, you know, it, there's so much conflict around politics right now. You know, there's so much conflict around politics. I don't think there's any other way to handle the situation other than the way that we're handling it now. Um, you know, you know, there are so many people I know, including myself, that have had pre-existing issues in the past. I have. I've had asthma and things of that nature. I was diagnosed with a heart condition, which led me to India very early. I don't personally want to deal with this thing. But I also haven't shut my life down. I mean, I think that there's a way to live inside of it that, that you know, we can exist inside of this for, for now. But I definitely believe we're handling this thing the way that we should. Uh, we're protecting people in the process. And I think that's a healthy way to do it. And all it's funny how we're, we're speaking about that here in the United States, but no other country is speaking like that. Mm -hmm. They're not speaking like, oh, this is just a flu. The whole world shut this planet down. You know, and this is not just America here. So when you see other cultures and other countries also behaving in this manner, you know that's the right thing to do. We're only having this type of eruption here in the United States. We're only having that here. Uh, most of the countries like, aren't thinking like this. When you say an eruption, what do you mean? Like people, there's not it's a conflicting... like this, the, the argument between whether we should be handling it this way or that way. Should we be shutting down the planet or should we not be doing this? this conversation isn't really going on in other locations. I mean, when you saw China welding people's doors shut, the idea that this is just something that we should, you know, embrace just as a flu, I think is kind of ignorance because other cu cultures that have dealt with things like this definitely did not handle this thing like it was just some normal flu. So that conflict is only going on here in the United States. Other countries are having this type of a conflict around these things. I think it's a political matter that we've been talking about it. Got it. So you think it's a political um, conflict that really it's Democrats and Republicans as opposed right. to what's really happening within the country. That's correct. As far as like the fact of it being a pandemic. And I believe we're handling it the right way. I also do like 
uh, late May and June for not opening the country up, but starting the process to begin that. Astrologically, that fits. So when do you think then we should start going back to work, for instance? You know, in my predictions, I I'm sticking with June. Sticking with June. I'm sticking with June, yeah. And then do you think that there's a recession to come? I think we're going to see all kinds of interesting things come from this because let, I believe the pandemic was started by this eclipse that happened in December. But let's not forget that Saturn, Pluto, and Jupiter all went into Capricorn. And this is a type of permanent change where I think things are going to take place between now and when we reopen that we are going to be dealing with a new world. Uh, that whole new world order thing, I, I'm not a subscriber to a lot of conspiracies out there. But the fact that we started talking about global currency and things of that nature, there are things coming from this that do insinuate a type of change that could be permanent on this planet. So I, I think that uh, we will have a new normal in June, but I think it will still unlook like anything. I think our I, I think that this planet went through a death. I think it is getting ready for a rebirth. That Capricorn energy, we're feeling it everywhere on this planet right now. And this is how easy it is when you use real astrology to make predictions like the government changing permanently. Jupiter stays in a sign for one year. So it takes him 12 years to go through the entire zodiac. So where was Jupiter 12 years ago from, from 2020? That was 2008, the last time the economy crashed. So you can make a prediction the economy just by itself would collapse from one planet, Jupiter going into Capricorn, because Jupiter is fallen in Capricorn. That's his least favorite sign to be in. Now, Saturn also just went into Capricorn. 30 years ago, right when Saturn went into Capricorn, the Gulf War spread everywhere. So we have one planet that the last time it was in Capricorn created a Gulf War. And then Jupiter, another planet last time it was in Capricorn, created the economy crash. They're together right now. They just moved in. So that is a massive alignment. Then we add Pluto. What happened the last time Pluto went into Capricorn? We actually did have a civil war then, and the United States was born with Pluto and Capricorn. One of the reasons why the death toll is the highest in the United States is because America is having a Pluto return right now. My point is th these three planets together moving into Capricorn is a death of an old way of being. And so only a new way of, of, of existing can come out of this. So I think we are at the end of something right now. So your prediction, a nice way of saying it is we're going into a recession and we need to be prepared and we need to come out of this spiritually aligned, giving up the idea of um, impermanence while also really navigating within ourselves what our passions are. So when we hit the recession where we can be more creative, innovative and adapt. Yes. And I also believe that the things that we have removed from us right now like the entertainment business, sports, I believe these things are going to surge in the future. We are living a life of what it feels like, not having movies, not having sports. We're living in that world right now. So I do believe the businesses that are hit hard in the entertainment world are going to skyrocket and flourish in the future. So yes, I do believe we're going to have a recession. Um, I do believe, though, that we are going to find ways to move ourselves out of that and then live and exist in a new way. I don't think a lot of the fears about this are going to be long lived, though. I do believe we're going to have a recession. We are, we're already in something unlike anything we've ever seen. I think it's even light to even call it a recession, what we are experiencing right now. But I absolutely do believe that we will pull ourselves out of this due to I think that we are going to thrive in many respects when we're done with this in ways that are totally new. Got it. And then you said that this could end or we could start to move. So the recession starts what, like roughly when, I know you said June to September is going to be a big time, but when can we see us coming out of this? How many years, months? Well, you know, there's a lot of predictions to make being an astrologer. You know, I do believe that the whole process isn't going to take longer than a year. Okay. really, meaning next summer of 2021, I do believe between now and then we will have a lot of transitions take place where, think, where people will be going back to work. I do believe a new type of economy is going to start building from all of this. So I do think temporarily we're going to be running into these, these hardships, but long term, within the span of a year, 
I am expecting a new type of normalcy from all of this and an explosion in the worlds that are completely hammered right now. Great. Okay. So who is your prediction to win the election? Well, you know, now it's time that I have to start looking at that. Um, I often don't make those predictions until I know who the two candidates actually are. And because of the whole pandemic going on, this has been the number one talk. So I will now, and we can do another show in the future when I investigate their charts. Uh, I just looked at Joe Biden's chart for the very first time this week. Means Ooh. now Donald Trump's chart I've been looking at for a while. This particular set of alignments isn't technically good for Donald Trump, though, um, because that Saturn, uh, Jupiter, and Pluto moving into Capricorn just moved in to his sixth house, uh, which isn't technically a good house for work and business and career for himself. You can already see the chaos that he's in on a day-to-day -day basis with all of this. If I have um, Joe Biden's information correct, which I have to validate that, there's a lot of different charts of people they'll put out online then we have the, we have a, a battle that's going to start between Donald Trump, his Saturn going into his sixth house, and Joe Biden, Saturn going into his tenth house. Which and, well, I'm going to explain. I have to verify Joe Biden's chart before I start making predictions. But if his chart that we have is out there, um, I do believe Saturn in the tenth is not going to be easy to beat. Um, that is an alignment that can produce... Uh, another president, 100%. Yet, that's something I didn't want to do yet because I have seen two different charts of Joe Biden, two. Okay. And so for that reason, I have to you know, refrain from making 100% predictions. But if the chart I have is right, I, you know, between now and election time, I think there'll be very significant things that take place that could indicate a transition coming. Interesting. Okay. All right. And then we'll end on this because I feel like this is really important as well. So I know right now, you know, obviously there's illness and there's a pandemic and people are worried about their finances and their livelihoods. But another thing that I'm seeing coming up often is difficulty or, or um, people flourishing in their relationships. Like, I feel like this is such an intense time for people for obvious reasons. You know, you're quarantined in the same space 24 seven. That's a lot on any relationship. What do you think this means for people's relationships? Like the purpose well, you know, it, it, that's a, I have been dealing more with that subject than any other subject. You know, this is the, this is the hard part about being an astrologer that gives readings as much as I do. There are astrologers that don't give readings, they just write books. There are astrologers that don't give readings, they just focus on political types of predictions. I have such a clientele, it's hard for me to focus on what's going on on the outside so much. But because I deal with personal relationships more than anything else, this is the subject I've been dealing with the most. And this has been really hard for people. The Saturn-Jupiter conjunction is, is traditionally a very challenging alignment for relationships. And why I believe that this is going to create a lot of changes in relationships is because all these planets going into Capricorn opposes the constellation Cancer, domestic life. And so I do believe a lot of people are going to be making changes in their relationships, and some will also be coming, become much stronger from all of this. For sure. For sure. What is your advice to couples right now? Well, you know, because Saturn is in his natural house. I mean, Saturn really likes to flex his muscle in Capricorn. That means being natural. I think we have to learn to choose relationships from a very natural point. And I don't think a lot of people do that in this age. I think they kind of run. Means, I don't think a lot of people know who they are. And I think a lot of people choose their relationships before fully knowing who they are. And with Saturn going into Capricorn, it forces you to be natural with your real self. And so the relationships that I think have come together under superficial circumstances, I'll put it that way, I, are not going to survive an alignment where Saturn is saying we want naturalness above all else. The people that have chose the relationships from the most natural setting, I believe, are going to flourish from this. The relationships that didn't choose from their natural place are really going to struggle. And people relationships are going to be given the option where people can actually see themselves. Did you choose your relationship from the most natural place in yourself or didn't you? 
Okay, if you want out of your relationship astrologically, when is the best time to do it? I don't want out of mine, but I'm just curious for. <laughs> well, you know, not during a pandemic, I guess. I've heard humorous stories of like, oh my God, we were just going to break up the other day and now we're in quarantine and she's, <laughs> she or he's stuck in my house with me. I've heard crazy stories like that. Um, but I think the awareness of, I think that even adding Pluto to this conjunction it's putting er, pulling everyone into their core of their most natural self. And I really feel by now, if you haven't chose a natural relationship for yourself, you know right now. And when, I'd say wait till June, because I think that's when we start rolling back into to a, a new type of normal. My gosh. Okay. Are there any other predictions or anything else you feel like everyone should know? Since you predicted this, I feel like your opinion really matters. <laughs> well, you know, that statement I said about having a heart attack and you have an option once you've survived a heart attack to change your lifestyle and live in a higher conscious way. And if you do that, then the heart attack works in your favor. It makes you a better person. If you just go back to doing the things that created that heart attack, then the next time you run into a situation like this, it's going to be devastating. And so I believe that we have felt something so deep in our core that I believe we change from this. I believe this going on enough is to shake people into changing permanently and don't go back to living the way you were before. This is an option to reinvent yourself, to live in the most natural state that we can, and to live in the most natural way for, your, for who you are. And I don't think we need to be overly preoccupied with well, what makes me the most money, you know, what does the best for me financially. I think we need to choose in life to do the things that we're passionate about. And most people don't choose in life what they're passionate about. They wanna feel safe, they wanna feel secure. All security is gone, all safety is gone. So choose what is natural for yourself. And the message of this, this transition is that, do what feels the most natural for, you, for yourself. That was a really great message. Thank you so much. And for all you people out there who are watching, thank you. I'm sorry, we had major Skype issues. I uh -huh. couldn't figure out how to put us next to each other. I don't even know what you're looking at. I don't know if you're looking at Jade's face or my face, but you know, thank you. Where can people find you? Because I think people should know about you. I, asterianastrology.com, A-S-T-E-R-I-A-N, astrology.com. How often do you make blog posts? Well, you know, I've been doing a lot more. See, here's that, that conflict I have of spending so much time working with people. Now I've been forced into blogging a lot more and my Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash Asterian Astrology, I've been doing a lot of blogging there and I'll be doing a lot more and also fine tuning some of these predictions that were made here as we go, especially around the presidency. I have to be really comfortable that I have the charts of the real people before I make them. And so we could be on, on the air again talking about that For in the future. Sure. Yeah. For sure. Well, thank you so much. Honestly, this was really informative. I feel, let me make sure I asked everything, but I feel really good about this. <laughs> thank you. All right. Thank you for having me on again. I appreciate it. Thank you, Jade. Talk right. to you soon. Bye. Bye. -bye.